Hello everyone, we are back for part two of Grinding Natural 8 with Blizzy for PokerVIP.com. And if you've not seen part one, quickly to go over it, Blizzy is this crazy gambler, poker player, high roller, whale, legend, whatever you want to call him. We've seen him win £30,000 in a day on Sky. We're now seeing him take on the Natural 8 tables where he's stuck $800 so far. In this series, there'll be like four or six videos. We we're not really too sure. We're gonna just see as you know, get as much out of it as we can. And this is part two. Part one's linked below, and the promotion is still live. Use the promo code Blizzy B L I Z Z Y all of the case, and you will get a deposit match up to twenty dollars and thirty five percent rake back weekly. Create your account using the link in the description, and if you need any help, just go ahead and. Get in touch. You can call us. You can email us. You can Skype us. You can do whatever you want. And we'll get you uh, all set up here on Natural 8. Where the games are pretty good. Um, obviously, this is a high stakes video. We're playing some 510. But there's plenty of 10 and L, 25 and L, 100 and L. If you're a mid stakes guy, there's tons of 2, 4, and 600 and L. So, whatever you want, it's there. But for now, we're just going to watch Blizzy play. Who has 7 9 offsuit in the big blind? 220 big blinds. Obviously, effective versus Tal, but Titi, <laughs> Titi Kaka, Titi Kaka has um, slightly less, just hovering just slightly over the 100 big blind mark. 7 9 off, he's going to come along, and we flop the open ended draw. Pretty good flop. I mean, one that we can definitely be aggressive on. I quite like this lead. He'll leave slightly over pot, which is something new and something we've only just seen. And he gets a call from Tal. Tal calling there, probably some very strong hands. I don't think he's got an 8. It'll be like a 10, a set, an overpair, or a big draw. It looks like Meow is not going to slow down and is going to go ahead and bet again. Um, I was happy when I saw him go from 240 to smaller because we could definitely get jammed on for that 200 amount. You know, if we bet like 240, Tal can just be like, okay, the board's a little bit wet now. There's two players. I, I best, you know, go for it. Titi checks this river. And I quite like this bet. And I really like the sizing here by uh, Blizzy. You know, we expect Titi to sort of like lead his flushes. So I think once checked, we can go ahead and bet and assume that Titi had a hand just like a 10. Like, you know, ace 10, king 10, and was happy to call, call. And go for it. We're going to go ahead and raise. Okay, we call. Yeah, Blizzy likes to call a little bit too frequently from the small blind. I think he should just start 3 bet in these like suit connectors. I think he accidentally led 10 here. Although, not that crazy bad of a play. We do have 3 fifths of a straight flush draw. Turns a pair of 7s. Check, check. I'm going to check this river. I mean, we might have the best ante. He can certainly float us with, like, a pretty wide range. You know, he could have a five. But once he bets, I think we have to fold. If we went check, check, I'd be quite confident we were going to win. Four, five off. Straddle on the button. I think it folds fine here. And um, this isn't the same guy that was um, opening our straddle all the time before. So yeah, folding's cool. Jack ten off now in the big. I think a flat calls fine. Definitely one of those hands that plays well, or well enough. We're often going to be dominated, but lots of straight draws. He's gone for a lead here. You know what? I really like Blizzy's leads. Um, not something I really do that. Oh god. Oh, I've. Oh, He's, he wants to. He wants to put something in there. He wants to put something in there. I wonder what this does as like an opponent. When you see somebody lead and then they sort of like pick an. Um, I can't call it an avatar. It's not an emoji. When they pick like an emoji uh, thing like that, I wonder if he just. Uh, I don't know what I would think. I probably think he's stronger than weaker. So maybe something he can use to his advantage. Ace-5, we get a walk. Fair enough. Definitely not a bad result. Risk 20 to win 15. Get another walk here. Game's tightening up a little bit. 
Yeah, that's right, Blizzy. Show them that they could have possibly uh, got a steal through. King 6 suited blind versus blind. I'd like to see this be like 2.5 to 3x. Really don't like the min raises. Um, and the reason I don't like the min raises is we're just going to get called pretty much always. And, you know, it's definitely fine to get these steals through by just raising. You know, if we just make it 30 and they fold and we win with King 6 suited, then that is certainly a nice profitable play. We check the 10. Maybe we would have just gone ahead and bet that. I think Tal's going to bet every single pair on the flop. I mean, King 6 does have some showdown, I guess. Don't like that 8, though. Although I think he probably starts betting his 8 9s and Queen 9s on turn. Are we going to win with King High? Nice. Yeah, it's, it's just close enough, I guess, for showdown value. Certainly, Ace High, I don't mind that line. But, you know, Tal can have some small aces. He can have some small pocket pairs, perhaps. Or even maybe a hand like King Queen. Oh, you know, King-9 or something. Although that would be a chop, would it? Can't remember the board. Um, so we straddle here, we get raised. And he's gone for 4x, so I think we should probably just be folding here. And I don't really love the idea of uh, raising, because we'd have to make it quite a large amount of money. We brick here and see a Queen, Queen-9. I think checking's fine. I think Titty's going to be taking a bit of a pot control line a lot and also trapping quite a lot on these kind of boards I think here we just have no option but to uh, let it go obviously drawing for the straight is never going to be a good plan making a pair of six is also maybe not a great plan <clears throat> a7 suited here Maybe a good cold force bet, make make it about 220, or we can obviously just fold. But you know, Titi has been quite active. I, I think a four bet might be nice here with the blocker. It looks like Blizzy is just going to opt to fold. Tau defends though, and we see a6-4 rainbow. And a very small bet here by Titi, which I really like. I like these small bets. It means we can do them with our value range, our super strong value range, and of course our bluffs. German player just sat down called Odei Su. Not too sure what that means. Tau calls, 3.20 in the middle and a 3 on the turn. Goes for a check this time, so maybe he's just giving up. But then, like, Jack Queen suited, maybe. Check, check. Four on the river. Blizzy sat there kicking himself with his ace seven, no doubt. Which we'll find out if it was good or not shortly. Bet of 235 now by Titi. So he's taking the uh, bet check bet value line. Quite often a value hand when someone does take that line. Deuce for off. We're just going to fold. Does he really not getting some hands in this part? But let me reassure you there will be plenty of action. Like I say, make sure you go ahead and follow the Poker VIP. Uh, Facebook page to see hand clips. Gonna raise king three here. I don't like the open. I think this is a bit too wide. I mean, we are facing two players who have been like incredibly aggressive um, and playing pretty much every pot. So I might tighten up a little bit in spots like this, but then loosen up a lot. You know, when we're facing sort of like the straddle, when we're in the straddle and we're facing a raise in position, maybe that's where I'd prefer to like three bet hand like king three, because you know. We're basically putting them under a lot more pressure. We are again in position. They're stealing a lot wider than it would be to just try and open and get these guys to fold in a uh, button versus big blind situation. 
Six unsuited, we all love this hand. The straddle didn't work there for some reason. Pretty sure it was ticked before the hand, maybe just because O'Day just sat in. Would have been definitely a nice hand to have in a straddle as well. Two callers and the door card was good. Flop second pair back to flush draw. I'm happy to see a bet here. You know, it just goes for straight up value and protection. And also, you know, if we improve on the turn with a flush draw, two pair of trips, we can continue. So just go ahead and put some more and more and more money in the middle. But we bet 80, maybe a bit too large. Could have just even got away with 65 or 70. He's going to show the seven of spades, obviously. Gotta love the... Ooh. Okay, come on, Titi. Put that three bet in. It's been a while since we've seen an all-in, and this could be a big one. It would be over a 3k pot if all the money did go in, and wow. Time for the four bet. I'll just go about 220, 230. I think 190 is a bit small, but with, you know, Blizzy's reputation, maybe it's fine to do whatever the hell you want. Although this guy has just sat down, so he's maybe not aware. Um, he does get a very quick peel, though, and a very interesting flop. Um, Ode Su, I don't think he's going to have that many sets or straights once he's 3-bet, but he's going to have a lot of hands like 10s, jacks, and queens, so he can definitely stay around here. I expect him to call his jacks and queens and to maybe jam his 10s. Pretty easy call here. Run it three times? I'd say so. Oh, he hits yes. Ode declines, which is probably not good. And what? He's going he's, he's gonna to take the insurance. Don't do it. He bottled it and took the insurance. Never take the insurance. Or maybe you should. I really don't know. But it seems like a lot of money when we're in a very good spot. I mean, I guess Ode Su's jam kind of makes sense. That he's got a gut shot two overs in the backdoor flush draw. I mean, we can fold better, like ace-king and ace-queen. And, you know, but he does just... I mean, I don't know. It's close, actually. It'd be interesting. When you first look at it, you think, oh, that's a bit spewy. But the more you think about it, Maybe it's his only option there, and against our range, and against our player type. We'd have to run a simulation on that, but it's maybe not that terrible. And it maybe it's his only play there, because you can't call. There's a lot of money in the middle, and folding doesn't seem great. But it's interesting that he just decided to run it once. We bet fold our bottom pair there. Um, I think that's fine. Eight and a six, we can fold. I wonder what Blizzy's doing. Probably eating some Ben and Jerry's, chilling out. A6 off. Not really an exciting hand. Should be good for a defend though. Versus a min raise, we can obviously defend quite a wide range and we don't really have to be three betting versus it all that often. So A6 can be just a very simple call. Flop. Maybe here I think about folding even though we do have those backdoor sort of like straight draws. Maybe that airs it on the side of a call a little bit. Or a check raise. Don't hate this at all. Me and Blizzy have a few different opinions on where we would check raise. I kind of do it when I have like a lot of backdoors. Blizzy kind of just does it when he has a backdoor or maybe an over or just kind of feels it. I would probably say Blizzy is like the ultimate feel player. You know, a lot of what he does is just how he feels, what he feels about the players. Um, plays his hand, plays their hand. Which, like I say, I mean, when, when you play him, you're either going to have a good session or a terrible session. King, oh, again, got that thing. Again, maybe a good three bet there with the king nine versus a button open. We block hands like ace king, king queen, king jack, pocket nines, ace nine. Sorts of hands that, you know, O'Day could uh, open and defend with. Um, we take out of his ranger a bit there, so 
I'd certainly be three betting a lot more frequently, especially in position, but small blind as well. We've been either flatting or folding, and I think uh, three betting the small blind is always going to be quite a good good play there. Um, A5 suited, yep, let's min raise it up. Okay, good flop. Flop a gut shot on a backdoor flush draw. Plus an overcard. So I think a bet of about 30 here would do the job. Again, really doesn't matter what Tal does. If he folds, that's good. If he calls, that's fine. And even if he raises, I think we can float one off there. You know, lots of good turn cards apart from just the immediate six to give us the straight. wonder why this hasn't straddled again for him. Really uh, hurting the action when it doesn't straddle. Four six eight rainbow check call by I just enjoy saying his name Titi Kaka Deuce on the turn Another bet here This O day could be a good time could definitely be a good addition uh, to the game I've also found as well you know like over my years of playing or like you know maybe even just watching like high stakes poker games or stuff the it's it's so crazy how like a good winning knit can turn into like an idiot maniac fish when somebody brings a lot of action to the game. Uh, you know, I remember a big hand from High Stakes Poker where Barry Greenstein like peeled a four bet with Jack Nine versus Dwan, raised, called it off on Jack Ten Deuce, hit the nine versus Dwan's aces, and he just kind of said, I just had the feeling. And you know, that feeling though is basically ego. Than him not wanting this kid to run him over. You know, he's so fed up and now all of a sudden he's playing loads of hands that he normally wouldn't. And just shoveling as much money in as possible. I've, I've seen it happen to a lot of people like that. You know, if you watch just TV shows or if you go to a casino or if you play yourself. You know, someone sits down who just brings action and they kind of like lose their mind. It's like, it's like they don't want anyone else to be like the biggest winner or to run over the table. And they just sort of like step outside of their shell. And that's certainly what Blizzy does. He makes people kind of like lose their mind. Currently down about $110 for the uh, video series. And make sure you uh, take advantage of our up to $20 deposit match. You create an account, use the promo code Blizzy. And if you if you deposit anything up to twenty dollars, we'll match it. So if you deposit five, we'll match it with five. If you deposit ten, we'll match it with ten. If you deposit twenty, we'll match it with twenty. And if you deposit a million and one dollars, we'll give you twenty bucks. You'll also get thirty five percent rate back every Monday. And like I said in the first video, big shout out to Milf Grinder, guy who's really doing well in the one hundred to ten k challenge on Natural Eight, currently up to thirty five hundred. Make sure you go to the My Journey section and check him out. Three nine we fold. Really run of uh, crappy cards here for Blizz. He will be itching. Raised by Tal and a call by Titty. Five six deuce, two clubs, one heart. Hey guys, sorry, the recording went a bit wrong there when he started to play some music. Um, so I've moved on to the second recording that he's given me, just to follow on the action. And this time he's again started at 5.10, and obviously mid-session. Um, now playing 5.10, four-handed, maybe it's the same session actually. Just a couple of players have come and gone. Towson is left with a lot of money over 5k. Jaded, who I've seen before, with 1400, and Mr. Miyagi, a player from the UK, was 6. 
So I think they've all kind of like topped up or um, Blizzard's gone ahead and wiped someone out. I do apologize for that, but um, the action does resume. Sadly, no action with King 10 suited, and I, I know we'd all love to uh, play and see be played. Jack ain't suited yet, but let's raise this up. Can definitely play a lot of hands, four-handed, three-handed, of course. Jack ain't suited uh, definitely ties into that. Get a call here by Tal very quickly on the button. Um, normal Tells would sort of say suited connectors, small pairs. We're going to go ahead and bet our second pair back to flush draw, though, and get a very quick call. And the 7 on the turn, really don't like this 7. Like I said, lots of suit connectors and lots of pocket pairs in Tal's range. So I think a check's good. I think we could bet any Jack, 8, or Heart. Or we could even check call Hearts. Yeah, I, I think I like a fold. I don't like this at all once Tal now starts taking over the, over the lead with the Ace high board. You know, you'd expect him to check back a lot of his small Aces, his 8s. A lot of his draws even. So when he's betting, he's either got like a really big draw. Um, or a made hand. I might be proved wrong. I am proved wrong. Blizzy is the man. You see, this is what I was saying before about being a field player. It has huge advantages. If you're sort of like a field, a field player and you've got balls, then spots like that you're going to win in. Whereas somebody who just is thinking about the game like super strategically or like, you know, pretty standardly, may I say. Um... Then you're gonna you're gonna win pots that they won't. So I'd have lost that pot. I'd have waved the white flag. Lizzie though thought, hold on, this doesn't make any sense. I'm gonna go for the check raise, and he takes it down. Could even think about a check call, like just check call, check call in your river, but a very wet board. So I think Blizzy probably just wanted to end that action. Nine ten, yep, let's raise it. Let's try and steal that big blind. Spoke about it before, but I've got to keep saying it. Let's start 3xing. Been 3 bet here. I mean, we are incredibly deep. Maybe not bad to take one off. We do take one off, and we flop that gut shot. Oh, and we lead 10. <laughs> I love these leads. It's kind of weird. Like, if you're a tower and you've got, like, ace-queen, like, do you just sort of, like, call? Do you raise? Let's see what would have happened. A 9 and a 5. I love the way you can peek at them, rather than it just showing. You can just have a quick little look and tease yourself extra more. But yeah, those t those ten bets, you know, like if if Tal has like a flush draw, does he just call and take like the price in position, or does he raise and turn his hand into a bluff, or you know, there's so much to it. <clears throat> Four and a nine. Let's go for a fold. Queen 10, I'd like to see a squeeze here, make it about 110. You know, it's kind of like one of those hands, we're going to be out of position. And um, we're also going to be dominated a lot. So when you squeeze it, you give yourself a lot more of a chance to win, both pre-flop and post-flop. Here we're going to have to go for a check fold. I say we're going to have to. We don't have to do anything, Blizzy. You do whatever the hell you want. Jack 7 going into the bin. Mr. Miyagi comes along. And by the way, guys, these guys haven't all won this money necessarily. Maybe they have. But there is the other side of it. Where in a lot of these 510 games, you can actually buy in for whatever the hell you want. You know, it's no cap, no, no max sit down. So Mr. Miyagi could be like a good reg. He could just be crazy. You know, so say if he's a reg, he might have come in and thought, okay, so Meow and Towel both have 5k. Maybe he thinks one of them's a fish. So he wants to buy in for more than them, so he has them covered, so he, therefore he can win more money in any given pot. However, the opposite is there. He can also lose more, so 
really is a balancing act of do you want to play 600 bigs deep? And I think the answer would generally be yes, like as a pro, you know. If you think you have an edge on someone, you're probably going to want to have them outstacked, even if it is for this amount. Or the other option, like I say, is he's just a bit of a crazy whale and wants to play super deep against other super deep players and, you know, gamble it up. Could be on the run of his life. Jack six going to win? Wow. But as he folded to seven, he'll be kicking himself over that one. Ace and a 10 offsuit on the button. Let's go for a raise. Min raise is fine, but okay, he's going to start 3xing now. I definitely don't hate that. I think when you're like quite deeper, when you're known to be a bit of a maniac, when you just want to play bigger pots, then 3xing is fine. We flop an ace here, probably going to have the best hand almost always. We expect ace jack to 3 bet, and aces and jacks to also 3 bet. Deuce is obviously out there, but I would just go ahead and bet here and try and get some value. I think 50 into 65 is good. He's gone slightly larger though. I mean, it's a very dry board, so we're probably not going to get that much action when we go bigger. But we do get a check call, and we see a 6 on the turn. I think I'd like to see another bet here. I think Jay's going to have some worse hands a lot here, so maybe bet turn and then check back lots of rivers. Or you can even check turn and then bet a, little, a lot of rivers or just snap any river bets off. But of course, Blizzy takes the man route. He goes for the bet, 140 into 185. Gets a call and a 9 on the river. I think it might be time to check here. We're only really being like ace 8. Jaded could, of course, have like jack x of spades. But um, he could also just have like two paired up here. Hoping slow playing a hand, like a set of twos. So yeah, now we're just praying he's got like ace 8, ace 5 of spades, something like that in calls. Not too sure what history these two have got as well. That's what we're we kind of forgetting and what I was forgetting. Maybe these two have played a lot of hands. Maybe like they've been grinding versus one another for weeks and weeks. Uh, but wow, we actually get check raised here, which is interesting. Jay definitely repping like a set. I'm not too sure how often he would check raise here with like ace nine or ace six. Wow, ace deuce. I think that's quite a thin raise. I mean, I expect him to just be stronger. Um, I don't really expect that many bluffs. But, you know, he can definitely be crushed there. But, again, we're thinking about dynamics and just the way these guys play. Maybe that's a straightforward um, value bet there. And he went so big as well. 220 to 880, I believe, or 800. Big bet indeed. I think we're fine to bet here. 2530 with our bottom pair back on flush draw once checked to. Have you just take down the pot or even build the pot for when we turn something good. But, generally, we're just happy to see some folds. Queen 10, we get the walk. And we're going to wrap up the video there uh, for part two. So remember, guys, click the link in the description to create an account. And use the promo code BLIZZY, B L I Z Z Y, all uppercase. And you're going to get a deposit match up to $20 credited to your natural eight account in cash. And you're also going to get 35% rate back every single week. Just give it a go, give it a try. And also, if you're a tournament player, plenty of big tournaments, 100k in guarantees each day now. So there is something there for everyone. So anyway, this was Jonathan for PokerVIP.com. And this was part two of Blizzy taking on grinding, not quite decided, natural eight poker. So yep, good luck, and I will see you back for part three.